Hello everyone, many thanks for always keeping it Ebru Africa of Linda Alela and welcome on board for News and Focus. And today we are going to make it a story Wednesday. And, and, and we have a lady who's going to tell us her story. And it's not just her story. Reason why we've decided to have her today is simply because she has an incredible story. It's a young lady who's decided to dedicate her life into helping vulnerable women, women who are older than her, you know, women who've had experiences that are, she's not had, but still she's able to speak to them. You know, we understand the kinds of the plight of widows, the plight of women out there, the issues that they go through on a day-to-day -day issues in, in society. And we always talk about empowering women and all that. But it's not easy, especially when they're going through tough times. And indeed, that's the reason why we're having Pastor Hannah Nginya. Pastor Hannah Nginya is here, of course, to, uh, she'll tell us she's a pastor from where and all that. And of course, we just get to know her. We just get to meet her story. And we also get to help out the women through her. Karibu sana, Pastor. Thank you, Linda. Many thanks for finding time to be here with us. Thank you. Yet, it's of course, you looked uh, extremely young, I would say extremely <laughs> young and pretty. Mm -hmm. And we have this notion that, of course, with all this pretty look and everything, you you, you would be out there having fun, fun. You know, you'd be out there, you know, just enjoying life and, mm -hmm. and, and having your beauty, you know, speak out to the world. But you have chosen a totally different path. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why we, we say today it's a Wednesday that is going to be full of uh, stories, yes. stories about you and mm -hmm. the great things that you're doing mm -hmm. to the women out there. So Karibu Sana and of tell us from where, uh, what church you come from. Okay. Um, my name, as uh, Linda said, is Pastor Hannah mm -hmm. Nginya. Uh, I, come, I fellowship at uh, Nairobi Pentecostal Church yes. and that's the church that I was pastoring before. Mm -hmm. I started Badili Center. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Of mm -hmm. course, she is also the CEO, or rather the founder of Badili Center and like you uh, like I told you earlier we're going to talk about this special thing that she's doing to our women out there and this is because just the other day we celebrated widows you know international widows day and mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of widows out there we're having issues with the widows and everything let alone the other women and all that so we would want first of all to get to know mm -hmm. Badili Center what is Badili Center and after you know the widows day and all that what is it what mm -hmm. are the plans that you guys have laid on ground in this particular day, of course, in celebration of that particular day. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just give a brief uh, about Badili Center mm -hmm. and how it came to be. Yeah. Um, I remember in 2005, when I finished my undergrad degree mm -hmm. on uh, sociology and politics, mm -hmm. um, my dad wanted me to do human resource and development. Yeah. But I think God had a different plan for me because w what I felt inside is that, you know, God has called me mm -hmm. and I, w I needed to serve God. Mm -hmm. So it's then that I actually just, you know, told my dad, mm -hmm. I want to, do, to go to Bible school and, you know, to the seminary and just study to serve God. Mm -hmm. And that same year, you know, just as I was waiting for my graduation, I joined in um, Nairobi, um, African Evangelical School, which is in Karen, mm -hmm. AIU, sorry, Africa International School. Yeah. Before it was called NEXT, that's why I'm trying to confuse yeah, the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I went and did uh, a Master's of Divinity in Pastoral Studies, which right. took three years. Okay. <laughs> and then after that, um, I was taken in at NPC, Nairobi Pentecostal Church, mm -hmm. Woodley, and I started my internship as a pastor of, uh, in the children's department. Mm -hmm. And it was there when I saw the plight of uh, the women who would come to ask for, you know, uh, just help from church. Mm -hmm. They'd come to beg for food. They'd come to ask for just help in every way, every mm -hmm. sort of way, basic needs. Yeah. So I just felt maybe I should do more. And I remember at that time I shared with a friend of mine, Pastor Jacob, mm -hmm. and a colleague at that time. And I told him, you know, I feel like I should help these women more and we should maybe have a training for them. Mm -hmm. Then um, another pastor who was my friend said, okay, you know, we had tried, they had tried that model of training and it failed. So they were not about ready to start yet. Mm -hmm. You know, they were still researching what to do next. So it's then that I felt, no, maybe I should do more than okay. what the church is doing. Okay. Then I resigned in the, in the year 2010, in March, mm -hmm. and that's when I began Badili Center. So you're resigning to go and help the ladies? Yes. And, and, and let's, face this, you know, most of the time, most of the help that they would want is, is, is matters financial. Mm -hmm. So you're resigning to go to help them. And uh, looking at you tentatively young, I, mm -hmm. I can imagine you might not be able to give more of advice, extra advice. They would actually mm -hmm. think you might not fit in their shoes because you've mm -hmm. not been there. Mm -hmm. And now you do not have money, I presume, mm -hmm. to help these ladies. Mm -hmm. How did you go about it? Okay. Because I believe when God gives you a call, because mm -hmm. I felt it was a call, 
he provides for the call. And I'm going to share a bit later how Badili started and how God mysteriously, you know, provided for Badili and has been providing for Badili. Yeah. But I remember when I, I got the call, I was scared yeah. because you see, I'd already moved out of home. Yeah. You know, I had bills to pay. Uh, I was taking care of myself. But I remember one, a friend of mine who was very mature in the things of God and faith said, you know, if you feel it's God who has called you then, yeah. you know, you can resign and he's going to provide for you. Yeah. And you know, in faith, because of that, because God provides, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that people don't know. When people hear living by faith, they think you're living in poverty, but God actually provides mm -hmm. and he gives, you know, connections. So I resigned by in faith and I said, okay, God, you're this God who has provided for other people. I've read faith stories of other people mm -hmm. that went before me and you have provided. So it means even for me, you're going to provide mm -hmm. for me. And on that basis, I went and talked to the bishop. bishop uh, that time it was now the, the current bishop uh, of Ginde. Mm -hmm. And I remember he told me, you know, God can send you to a ministry even for a day mm -hmm. to fulfill purpose. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you feel, you know, being led here has also led you to another call mm -hmm. of God, then I will release you with a clean heart. And he prayed for me. Mm -hmm. He has such a, a fatherly heart. Mm -hmm. And that really touched me and it gave me confidence to, you know, to go out there and start Badili Center. Yeah. Yes. All right, Badili mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. And of course, your dad wanted you to go to school, do something different. Mm -hmm. And here you are, you're doing a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'd love to know, was your dad, is your dad a Christian mm -hmm. or, of course, uh, because, I mean, well, it's natural for a parent to be proud if, if, yeah. if you see your child is, is venturing uh, so much into matters, mm -hmm. you know, religion and mm -hmm. all that kind of tells you that, of course, she's going to the, through the right path. Yeah. But then again, there's always this notion that you do not want maybe a pastor, maybe it's not going to pay much, mm -hmm. and you're looking at your kid, mm -hmm. and you're, you're thinking she, she can do even better, she can do other things, and yeah. you know, pastor as a side, her mm -hmm. solo or a side, whatever thing to mm -hmm. do. How do you see? Did he take it, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. My dad was not so surprised because he raised us up in the ways of God. Oh, he would yeah. read for us scriptures uh, when we were young every evening. Mm -hmm. But my siblings had a problem because yeah. he said, okay, what kind of career have you chosen, you mm -hmm. know? Where is this leading? <laughs> because they are not, and in our family background, there's nobody, I, can, I can't recall of anybody who had, you know, ventured into, into going to Bible school or yeah. into the seminary. But he, uh, my dad encouraged me actually, mm -hmm. and he actually paid for me fee. And I, I remember I also would get scholarships mm -hmm. because I would do well in class. So um, the the biggest, m the people who were the biggest problem and challenge were my siblings. Mm -hmm. You know, it made us even not talk for some time. Mm -hmm. But later on, they came to accept. You know, because they saw the passion I had. Mm -hmm. You know, for what I'm doing and from you know just the call of God in my life. Mm -hmm. And you know, Linda, sometimes some things it's not you who dictates. Yeah. I remember God orders, I mean, there's a, there's a verse that says, you know, the steps of a righteous man out of God. Yeah. So God is the one who directs you. Sometimes you want to take one path, mm -hmm. but then again, he leads you to other paths. Mm -hmm. And another thing that people get it wrong is that they think when you're serving God, you're just fixed, you can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. I've realized that as I'm working with God, I'm even discovering myself. Mm -hmm. Father, I know the talents I use, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I love, you know, just modeling and all that yeah. so you can also use other talents even as you're serving God. it doesn't mean that you're just fixated yeah, into on this, one thing you know. yeah all right now mm -hmm. of course uh, we're always told how do you get to talk to these ladies and tell them purpose mm -hmm. you know like you know you, you you have a future yet here you are saying that of course god guides your path and he really directs you to this particular mm -hmm. direction but sometimes we're also told that we hold you know our destiny we hold our future we hold basically everything that we uh, want to be in, in life. So mm -hmm. how, uh, at some point, it could be more of contradicting because I, I, I can't imagine. Well, let me start by asking, mm -hmm. at a tender age, did you ever mm -hmm. think that you would be this? Of course. Not really, mm -hmm. because I, I hadn't imagined myself, you know, going into the pastoral and everything else. But I knew for sure, you know, I wanted to just serve God in whatever capacity and yeah. whatever way. Mm -hmm. Because uh, again, like I'd said, we were raised up in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. But I never really foresaw myself being a pastor. It's something that just came, you mm -hmm. know. And, yeah. and that's why I say, you know, sometimes um, you might not know, but God intervenes in mm -hmm. our lives, mm -hmm. all of us, you mm -hmm. know. We don't know, but in his own ways, you know. So for me, it was that desire to just serve him. And it just came all of a sudden. It was so heavy on my heart right. that I couldn't even ignore, ignore it. it. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you get to know that it's the voice of, call, is, uh, of God? Is it because it's simply it's doing good? Mm -hmm. No, what? actually, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, you know, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. Working with God is just like any other relationship mm -hmm. you have with a friend. You know, it, it takes time to know the friend. Mm -hmm. And as you grow more in him and as you go, 
intimate with God, you will get to know his voice when oh, he's right. speaking to you. Okay. Of course, in the world, there are so many other voices out there, mm -hmm. voices from maybe friends, voices in your own mind, mm. but there's a distinct voice of, w that comes upon you when you walk with God and you know, really, this is God speaking. And also, mm -hmm. he confirms, because for me, he had to confirm through a friend, mm -hmm. you know, that this is where he wanted me to be. To be, yeah. yeah. All right, now, why the ladies only? Because we also have men out there mm -hmm. who are going through uh, through tough times, mm -hmm. you know, probably somebody just had a wife and, and the wife mm -hmm. passed on and mm -hmm. is left with the kids and mm -hmm. all that. Well, like you said, maybe it's it's because maybe women used to come to your place, you know, mm -hmm. to, to where you're working, you know, to church and, and asking for, for help in, in this way or another. But there must have been another reason as to why mm -hmm. you based your focus on, on women in particular and as mm -hmm. much as they're vulnerable we mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. so why most why is it that you focus on the women most and mm -hmm. of course you'll also need to tell us the challenges that you go through okay mm -hmm. i remember when i was young uh, i lost my mom when i was very young all right so it also took away um that privilege of growing up with a mom mm -hmm. so that thing and, and also you know just th that desire of wanting a mom I think is what led me to want to be close to God mm. and also just starting to realize the challenges that women mm. go through because women go through a lot especially in Africa mm. and women who come from poor backgrounds they go through a lot sometimes they are single mothers they are the only providers so they have to come back home and also just cater for their children they have to fend for these kids mm. they have to be the father and the mother it's tough you know and or sometimes you find that they are battered women are battered in silence yeah. because mm. maybe culture tells them you know this you is your husband be, yeah. so you should take it mm. lying down low or culture also some culture dictates that women have no voice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you're married and you can't speak for yourself because you're a woman mm -hmm. you know and i remember in the old old greek uh, times they used to say thank god i'm not a dog or a woman that mm -hmm. can tell you where a woman was placed mm -hmm. so it's just not now that women are starting to have issues in life but it started a long time ago mm. and when you look at the ministry of jesus he always uplifted the woman yeah. i remember like in the issue where people came to stone a woman say she was uh, committing adultery mm -hmm. and he defended that woman not yeah, because he defended the scene but the person you yeah. know and then i remember also in on instances where in his ministry most of the people who were following him were women mm. you see so women have a very special you know part or, or place also in god mm -hmm to know who they are but that doesn't mean that we are segregating the women from the men mm -hmm. or saying that let's empower the women so that the women can take over men yeah, yeah. because that's not the design of God different sexes have different uh, roles, roles in God, in even God. in marriage mm -hmm. so you find that um, now when in the world people want to compete you know different sexes want to compete yeah, yeah. but that's not how the plan of God wa mm -hmm. was from the beginning. So should we say that we should stop striving for equality because for the longest time mm -hmm. we've been striving for equality? You know, um, for me, equality is not what people think like I should be equal to this person. No. Yeah. And I, I am not uh, disreputing the fact that women should fight for their rights. Mm -hmm. They should because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. some of them are really abused. Yeah. You know? But it should be in a way that is moderate so that it, it doesn't break families mm -hmm. or relationships, mm -hmm. even with the men. Because mm -hmm. God knew we needed each other, both men and women. Mm -hmm. But yes, let's work in a way that, you know, the women benefit and the men also, also get to benefit. benefit. Yeah. All right. Now, mm -hmm. what are the programs that we have with the Daily Center? What exactly mm -hmm. is it that mm -hmm. you're doing and what women are you reaching so far? How okay. many women have you reached and mm -hmm. how many lives have you transformed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me first ex start by explaining. Badili means transform. Yeah. And um, our program, we started with the women, mm -hmm. but we have also, women have also come in our training. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the youth, mm -hmm. because also we believe the youth are the future. Mm -hmm. The youth are the future. So we also want to empower the youth. And anyway, many of the women who we train, even mm -hmm. though they have children, they still fall under the category, the, the UN description of the youth, which is 18 to 35 mm -hmm. years of age, they still fall under that category. So um, I remember when I started Badili Center, and, um, and, and you know, it's just like I was learning on the job, if I can use that word, mm -hmm. because I was just trying to see how best to help these women. Mm -hmm. But um, after one year, that is in 2011, I already had a curriculum mm -hmm. where we'd now trained these women on the theory and mm -hmm. the practical business skills. Mm -hmm. So the theory skills, we started with self-discovery, because somebody has to discover, them discover themselves. Yeah. Huh? 
And then when you discover yourself, then we have change of mindset and attitude. Mm -hmm. Because I believe we, if you train somebody and you don't change their minds, then you haven't really transformed Transform that person. Them, yeah. And then we have a health course because some of these women, even the basic of knowledge, information, mm -hmm. they don't have about health, about just eating a balanced diet, which you take for granted because we are taught maybe in home science. Mm -hmm. Some of them never went to school. They started family very young. And then we have six business courses, which include bookkeeping, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you know, a stewardship course. We also have sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, financial management. Mm -hmm. And then we have added two more courses this year, which is the civic education, right. because we believe that uh, uh, people should know their rights and also know you know, a bit about governance. About the so and then also we have a leadership course, but this we train at their level. Mm -hmm. But then the women, we started with training the woman, women who had come from poor backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But now we're also training other women too, because mm -hmm. like the two courses, the first two courses, self-discovery mm -hmm. and then change of mindset and attitude. They're mm -hmm. courses that are just, you know, taught across the divide. It doesn't matter about you, you know, yeah, socioeconomic yeah. Social status, yeah. mm -hmm. but you, you need them because you need to know who you are yeah. as, as a person. Mm -hmm. So we also train that. And even most men like coming for those two courses, you All know, right. and then, uh -huh. mm -hmm. so and then we have the practical courses, mm -hmm. which includes soap making, sewing, peanut butter making, mm -hmm. baking, beadwork. Mm -hmm. We also have creative arts. Huh? We have also have introduced plating, plating mm -hmm. of the hair, and uh, the art, uh, just arts, you know, like right. painting mm -hmm. and all, the, yeah. Like how many women do you have on board right now? And and, and, and are they supposed to pay a fee mm -hmm. or a Badili Center is, is just um, a fee based, I would say, you know, something okay. to do with grace for them? Uh, so far we have trained 2,000 women yeah. uh, in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Nigeria. Right. And we have partnered with different organizations, yeah. just like, you know, CMS mm -hmm. and others, uh, Breakforth International. So these organizations have also helped us, you know, just be able to go further because I believe I can do this work on my own. Right. And that's why we encourage partnerships. We have also partnered with different churches here mm -hmm. in Nairobi, you know, that have helped us, uh, you know, even provided halls and mm -hmm. then we able to train. So the model we use is that we look for those people who c really can't afford mm -hmm. the training. We look for sponsors oh, right. who are able to sponsor the training, mm -hmm. and then they're able to buy. The, the, I forgot to mention about this manual. This is a manual mm -hmm. that I authored. Mm -hmm. It's called Financial Freedom for Vulnerable Women. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is our logo. Mm -hmm. This means these are people in darkness, but they're coming to light. To light, alright. So that's what our logo means. Mm -hmm. I hope so they're yeah, alright. Yeah. So this book goes for 500 Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. So a woman sh at least should be able to buy this yeah. and then maybe just pay 500 for maybe the practical. Mm -hmm. Then the other we subsidize. But that those are just the very poor women. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. for other people maybe who are able to pay to the pay course, for. we charge at least 5,000 per person to mm -hmm. do the whole course, the, the, whole practi course. the theory mm -hmm. course, and then they pay some more money if they mm -hmm. want to do the, pr uh, the, the practical courses mm -hmm. just to buy the ingredients and everything. Okay. So yeah, so those are the courses that we have mm -hmm. for Badili Center. So it depends, you know, with the also the kind of group. If we have a, let's say, a group that is flexible, we can be able to train even within a week. Mm -hmm. If we have a group that they are only available on Saturdays, mm -hmm. we can be able to train within two months and a half. Where and you then guys they graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, our offices are at uh, Kilimani, mm -hmm. just behind uh, Near Uchumi, Bishop Mago. Oh, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, something else I, I, I forgot to mention mm -hmm. was that, so when the people, when we have groups that, and they come and they complete the training, we give them a certificate. All right. So that certificate mm -hmm. uh, is able to help them maybe get jobs and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. We also have mentorship and counseling sessions mm -hmm. where the people come. And the mentorship, we invite uh, people from different um, spheres of life, All right. you know, different um, Maybe like if it's in the banking sector, mm -hmm. if it's in the, um, like maybe people are in the health sector, to come and just mentor these people and to expose them to a wide variety mm -hmm. of, you know, of, 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 of things in life. Mm -hmm. And then the counseling, we have, we have uh, pastors who come in or professional counselors mm -hmm. who are able to counsel the, the woman or the person who's coming for training. Mm -hmm. Because ours, we want to focus on a holistic uh, kind of approach mm -hmm. of training where we, we cater for the person as a whole, yeah, yeah. not just you as the as an individu as an individual, as a, or yeah, maybe on particular on ground, particular yeah. ground mm -hmm. no, because we believe someone has, I mean, we ha a human being is made up of the body, spirit, and soul. Yeah. So we try to cater for all these all this. three aspects. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, speaking of that, still, let me ask you, mm -hmm. in case somebody comes and they 
take a particular course and they're done with the course what follow-up do you make you know after mm -hmm. that maybe they go out there well it's not necessary they're going to be uh, to vent for themselves it's mm -hmm. not necessary they're going to get jobs but well luckily they could get jobs mm -hmm. but still like for instance these women come here because they've gone through a lot you mm -hmm. know that psychological torture yes. that torture they've gone through mm -hmm. and it's not it's a healing process that takes that might take long it, might, it cannot take only three weeks mm -hmm. it, it needs more time and everything and you know for this person to come back to to equilibrium and to, to come back to stability mm -hmm. what do you do after that and of course I also want to know the challenges that you go through okay. yeah all right so after the trainings mm -hmm. we do a lot of follow-up uh, and evaluation sessions yeah. where we uh, and that's why we like working with churches or organizations mm -hmm. so that it can be easy you know to follow up on this person on these people as a group yeah. because following up on one person one person it's gonna it be hard it's for it's a bit tough, yeah. so we normally call them after maybe we, we go and train after a month or so we keep on following up with the group mm -hmm. how, how have you been how is it um how has the training helped you how has right. it changed your life mm -hmm. and we have actually had over f many actually let me say 70 percent success stories mm -hmm. of people who just wa were not um doing it much in life or they were not doing well mm -hmm. but after they came for our trainings they got a skill their minds were transformed mm -hmm. and now there are people who at least are active and are able to you know be productive and, and even change be change agents for their own society right. so we're Great. able to do that the follow up okay some of the Okay, I'll just mention about the challenges and mm -hmm. also some of, of the, the major one. I'd want to know: Are you married? <laughs> no, I'm sorry not. Sorry to ask that. You're not. Yes. So that should be a major challenge because mm -hmm. you can imagine this is a lady who's been, who was married or maybe is still mm -hmm. married and mm -hmm. is going through tough times. Mm -hmm. You know, you try and talk to talk to them mm -hmm. in as much as before they even get to these other counselors and yes. other people. Yes. You talking to them first of all mm -hmm. looks like it might not make so much sense because you do not understand what you're not yet there yet. You mm -hmm. know, so something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. and of all right, you know, yes, it's true, I'm not married. Mm. But I believe wisdom comes from God, you yeah. know. Sometimes, you know, most of the time, even before I do counseling or I speak to the women, I usually spend so much time praying. And I have friends who are married mm -hmm. and have taught me a lot about that. And it's an area that I know I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But uh, so when the women come with all these problems, you know, I'm able to counsel them also in with the help of other couples who yeah, are also yeah, yeah. married. Mm -hmm. Because what we, what we want to do is, um, because in this world I've noticed many people have a very negative view nowadays about mm -hmm. marriage because of all the divorce rates that are yeah. coming up. But when we have the pastors come in or other couples who are positive, they're mm -hmm. able to see, okay, marriage can work. Mm -hmm. And marriage in God does work yeah. if you, you know, when you use God's godly principles. So that's how I'm able to do it. Though mm -hmm. I know it's not easy. We'll, we have our details, our email addresses that maybe we can give on the show yeah. is it possible yeah, just mention yeah so badili they can just uh, send us an send us an email on badili center at gmail.com mm -hmm. and also you they can be able to go and check out our website at badili center dot mm -hmm. com and be able to see what we are all about but when they send an email we'll, we'll be able to respond to them all right yes. that's great mm -hmm. now final words mm -hmm. to these ladies who are out there and of mm -hmm. course uh, time is so bad we will not touch so much but anyway mm -hmm. nonetheless i think there's someone who's been helped out there and of course one simple word that mm -hmm. they would want to hear what of hope before they get to reach to you okay mm. yeah for me uh, the, the word of hope i can give people is that god is a god of second and third and fourth and fifth and many chances mm -hmm. you know and that God is able to lift you from nothing to something, mm -hmm. you know. And that when you start by faith, God is able to carry you through. Right. We started by Dilip Center by faith. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know how it was going to go. But right now we have trained so many people. We even won a, an award in 2013, wow. the Africa In fact, pillar. I wanted to ask about your success stories, but clearly from the what you've uh, said, mm -hmm. I mean, it's clear that you're doing good. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Africa pillar award. And we just, you know, God has been providing you know uh, the connections yeah. people r like last year i remember uh, a diplomat's wife read about us and sh it opened other doors for us oh you know gosh. i've seen so many doors opened with even the media mm. the government because of god mm. so he's able so you don't have to go out there as a woman to compromise yourself to get stuff done or t for doors to open yeah. but when you have god doors will open so mm. he's the door opener the one who guides you. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor, for Thank finding you. time to be here with us. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm finding it so hard calling you, Pastor, because <laughs> I, I kind of look like it's more of less the same age and mm -hmm. we, we used to pastors, you know, pastors, yeah. what that means. But nonetheless, of course, God mm -hmm. chooses and enables the people that he chooses. So many thanks for always finding time to be here with us. Remember, you can talk to us, of course, in case you'd want to get contacts to Badele mm -hmm. Center. And of course, and until next time, I'm Linda Alila Mathambu. Always keep it able.
Sydney Hospital. Thanks to the team that has made up, uh, the program a success. Till next time, bye bye.